Good morning and welcome to Unity on the River. Come on in. If you are comfortable to hold hands, please rise and join in singing our opening song today, which is Surely the Presence. If you are comfortable, join hands and we will begin. presence of the Lord is in this place because you are here. With open hearts, we allow ourselves to be open to the transformation, the inspiration, the direction of spirit as it flows in, as it flows as, as it flows through us. We are the embodiment of the one power and the one presence we call God. And there's nothing like coming together in spiritual community to celebrate that. This is why we are here. And with great joy, we let it be. Amen. Welcome, good morning. Have a seat. Let's do some singing. Okay, get ready. We're going to do Ogin's theme song. No, we are. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Glory of the Lord, 
was beautiful. Do you see her over there like playing the piano and directing the choir all at the same time? I, I can't like tie my shoes and think about the day at the same time. She's over there. That was really beautiful, really lovely music. Priority choir in the band. Yeah, you can just really. I like that thing with them walking up the aisles. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Got a little Motown. Yeah, so I went to the Motown, the musical yesterday in Boston. Oh my gosh. Get your tickets. It was so good. Did you see it, Rose? Oh my gosh, fabulous. Anyway, good morning. My name is Jackie Woodside, and I will be facilitating services with Reverend Ogan Holder, our senior minister today, and welcome to Unity on the River. Uh, we are a church, yes, thank you. We are a church of celebration, inspiration, transformation, oneness, and joy. Those are our core values. That is what we base what we do here, and that is what we base who we are with one another. So open your heart to receive those core values as we say our mission and vision together. The mission of Unity on the River. We are a vibrant spiritual community that celebrates the presence in all and awakens humanity to its divinity. And our vision, centered in love, we joyously co-create a world of oneness, peace, and harmony. Hmm, it's lovely, isn't it? So today, Reverend Ogan is going to take us on a journey deepening that sense of experiencing our oneness, our peace, and our harmony as we look at, think about, and talk about relationships, particularly how to be engaged in loving communication in relationships. So all of you who are like, tag, I should have had my spouse be here today. There's still time to text them and tell them to make sure they get here or get online. Yeah. Communication, loving communication and relationships. So we're looking forward to hearing that message today. And we're also looking forward to celebrating this afternoon the annual meeting of Unity on the River. Say happy birthday. We are 18 years old today. Woo! Isn't that great? 18 years old. So um, just again to just recap a little bit of the history of the church. It was 18 years ago this month that who does anyone here know what this 18 years ago this month Annika no Paula yeah some of you guys were there and, and Leslie you sang at that service so it that's lovely it's so cool that you're here that was like divine order so 18 years ago this month um, our church unity well it was not unity on the river then I think it was unity of greater Newburyport right uh, we began services at the Newberry Savings Bank it was in the basement in the basement of the Newberry Savings Bank. Rosemary, you were there. Um, so it's lovely to have those of you who were there at that original service, many of you here with us today. So, and then just again by way of history, it was three years prior to that that our founding minister, Reverend Shipley Allenson, began the study group that originated with the Unity Church that we all love and celebrate today. So 18 years old, what happens when you're 18? You gotta vote. You get to vote, yeah, right. What, what, Paul? Get ready. Yeah, you get your, no, your license at 16. Anyway, so when you're 18, you know, you go off on your own. You begin venturing into the world and experiencing your independence, your sense of self, and really, uh, it's the next level of incarnation, the next level of experiencing yourself apart from the mother. And I just can't think of a more apt anniversary for us as we've had such a healthy and loving transition from our founding minister to our rock star current minister, Reverend Ogan. The funkiest minister ever. Go Ogan. All right. Enough about that. So, um, so that's what we'll be doing today, right after services. Uh, we will, we're going to try to start around quarter to 12, depends on what time we finish services today. So stay tuned, but plan on hanging around for, uh, for our annual meeting after that. Um, so uh, I want to welcome anyone who is here celebrating with us today for the first time, hearing about that 18-year anniversary. If you are celebrating with us today for the first time or you'd like to be recognized for the first time, if you could just raise your hand and let us know that you're here. Someone from our welcome team will greet you. Is there anyone who's with? Oh, so right, so if you haven't gone to church at Union River before, you're home getting ready for the Pats game, right? So that's... Is it right? Wow. <clears throat> well, all right. And we also want to welcome those with us who are on live streaming today. Turn around and say hello to our friends on live streaming. We always appreciate your presence. Please know for all of us, just to remind ourselves, we celebrate all paths to God. And our presence together really inspires and enriches our experience of our own God self on earth. So thank you for being here with us this morning. 
Uh, is that it? Yes, yes, yes. Carol, are you? Carol. Gosh, I don't have any right oh, you don't have anything this morning. Okay, great. So we'll have some announcements later on. So this is the time in our service that we, we greet one another in love. As you all know, since none of you are new here today, we greet one another with an open heart and closed hands as we greet one another in love saying, Namaste, the divine in me acknowledges, sees, and recognizes the divine in you. Namaste. having Les here, who started in the beginning and is here again today on the 18th. Wow, what a coincidence. Yeah, it's been nice to have Les back. She's been tithing her time and talent. It's just been really awesome. And I'm just going to bring her tune, Heaven Down Here. This is a love song for ourselves, for one another, and for the divine. It ties it all in. What are you waiting for? Believe in me. Isn't it love in this life that you need? You can offer your soul to an altar of sadness.
give your heart to love Let's bring heaven down here Let's bring heaven home down I don't want to wait for the angels Let's bring heaven down Good morning. Good morning. Nothing like music to give you that heaven down here experience. Beyond what, beyond what words. Thank you. Really love this band. Is it possible, like, if I ever go guest speaking anywhere, I could just take you with me? Is, is that right? I know you'll all, like, double suffer if we're all gone, but just, just saying. Just saying. Um, I wanted to um, do a quick um, revisit revisiting of something I mentioned last week. Remember last week I told you all about my uh, Garth Brooks concert experience? And the thing I love about you guys is that you are a very highly intelligent congregation. You don't just pay attention to what I do say, but you pay very close attention to what I don't say. And more than a few of you, as you were going through the receiving line, said, you never mentioned if you had a good time at the concert. <laughs> and my response was, you're right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I continue to acclimate myself to your wonderful New England weather. Some of you may have saw what happened last week when I landed after that wonderful snowfall that you had. My car was at the airport, and I didn't park it in the garage, and I had an ice scraper about this long to, do, to dig it out. And it was one of those things where, you know, sometimes you find your, you know you're going to show up for something you know you are not equipped for it. <laughs> but you also know you don't have much of a choice. Like, I didn't have a choice but to show up to get the car, otherwise, well, I wouldn't be here. So, the whole time on the plane, going through the airport, the shuttle to the parking lot, the steps from the shuttle to the car, <laughs> was like, I have no clue what's going to happen when I get to the car but it'll work itself out <laughs> somehow. Like, that was, that's all I had. That's like all I had. I got nothing else walking up there. Then I pull out this little ice scraper, look at the snow and go, yeah, I don't know how it's gonna work out. But, <laughs> but it did, it did, it, it, it did. I was able to dig myself out. Um, speaking of tools, speaking of having the correct tools for a thing, uh, last week I talked about how we can be in relationship with each other, to facilitate the best experience of relationship with each other. And I talked about these four things, uh, self-love, opening your heart, communicating honestly with each other, and releasing attachments to any outcomes from the relationship. And I gave you an exercise. You remember what the exercise was? I see some heads nodding. What was it? Right, three seconds. So if someone is saying something, I guess a lot of you didn't do your homework, huh? <laughs> you know, there's going to be homework from these talks. <laughs> Just letting you know. So if you need to take notes, take notes. There will be a homework assignment at the end of this talk as well. <laughs> because spiritual practice is not just showing up on Sundays and listening to me. It's about putting it into practice, 
uh, during the week as well. So I also encourage you to, you know, take a re-listen or re-watch to the talk when it gets up on YouTube uh, during the week, just to, you know, tweak the memories. If you're like me at all, um, I don't have a problem with long-term memory. I can remember things that happened years and years ago. There's some stuff I want to forget that happened years and years ago, but it's in there. My issue is getting it from short-term to long-term. That's my issue. So things don't always get there. So revisit it. Your homework assignment was to, as you are in conversation and dialogue with others, as they share, to do a little deeper listening. And part of the uh, a technique to facilitate that was simply to wait three seconds and breathe and really hear what that other person said before speaking again. And ask yourself, was what I was going to say in response to what I thought they were going to say or what they actually said? Because those are two different things. We often already, as a person is speaking, we prep our answer before they're done their sentence. So again, are we responding based on what we think they were going to say or what they actually said? That deep listening. So I want to go a little bit uh, deeper with this idea of being in loving communication because it's February and, you know, culture would have us focus on love more so than any other month during February. I find that strange because, you know, in unity we are grounded in love, so love should always be our focus. But, you know, when in Rome, so here we are, it's February. We're going to talk a little about love going into February. And to highlight the idea that to be in loving relationship with each other, not just our, our romantic partners, but just anyone, anyone in our life, we are going to be in relationship with them. And to really have and maximize the loving element of that relationship, we need to be in healthy, loving communication with them. Charles Fulmore, uh, co-founder of Unity, talks about love as the great harmonizer and healer that stands under everything. And I think one of the, the biggest obstacles to us experiencing that harmony and that healing in our relationships is the lack of communication. And I wouldn't even say the lack of communication, because some of us communicate more than we need to. Again, I gotta remember, I statements, not drag you all into this. I sometimes communicate <laughs> a lot more than I need to. I say more than is necessary, okay? So how do we get ourselves into that place of loving communication? I've been reading uh, Thich Nhat Hanh's book, The Art of Communication. If you've never read it, I highly suggest uh, you, you find a copy. It's, it's this beautiful tome of inviting us not just into deep listening, but loving speech as well. And for me, that encapsulates what communication is about. Communication is a two-way exchange. So deep listening and loving speech. Part of the, part of the uh, deep listening idea is listening with compassion. And here's what uh, Thich Nhat Hanh says. He says, mindfulness of compassion means you listen with only one intention to help the other person suffer less. This is deep listening, to help the other person suffer less. When we listen with compassion, we don't get caught in judgment. And judgment not necessarily of just the other person or judgment of their actions, but judgment of, well, if that were me, here's what I would have done. Because I also do that a lot. I also do this. People are speaking with me. Well, here's what I would have done. And if I had done, if you'd done what I would have done, you would not have this problem. <laughs> I guess you can relate. <laughs> but I, get, I, I catch myself doing that. And I know it's not the correct way because, A, again, I'm not listening. I've already formed my uh, response and not really listening to them. So it's been a practice of not doing that, not going to that place, to realize that my job is to listen so that they suffer less. And for that, I've got to take myself out of the equation. 
take myself out of the equation. Here's another quote I love. When we stop talking and thinking and we listen mindfully to ourselves and others, one thing we will notice is our greater capacity and opportunities for joy. Finding the joy. Let's hear from Thich Nhat Hanh himself. No, he's not here. Everybody, everybody calm down. I have a great video clip I want you to show. Uh, let's see if we can pull that up. This was an interview he did uh, with Oprah. You refer to, I can't remember which book, but you talk about deep listening also. Deep listening is the kind of listening that can help uh, relieve the suffering of the other person. Uh, you can call it uh, compassionate listening. You listen with only one purpose, help him or her to empty his heart. And if you remember that uh, you are helping him or her to suffer less, and then even if he say things full of uh, wrong perceptions, full of bitterness, you are still capable to continue to listen with compassion. Because you know that listening like that, with compassion, you give him or her a chance to suffer less. If you want to help him or her to correct his perception, and then you wait for another time, but for this, the time being, you just listen with compassion and help him or her to, to suffer less. And one hour like that can bring transformation and healing. So I love this idea of deep listening because oftentimes when someone comes to you and they want to really vent, they want to purge whatever is going on inside them, people start talking and giving advice. So if you allow the person just to let whatever those feelings are to come out and then at another time come back to them with your advice or your comments, you would, you would experience a, a, a deeper healing. That's what you're saying. Yes, uh, the fear, the anger, and the despair is born on the ground of wrong perception. And we have wrong perceptions concerning ourselves and the other person. And that is the foundation for conflict and war and violence. You've said that the only way we can begin to end war is, be, is, is due to communication between people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should be able to say like this, dear friends, dear people, I know that you suffer a lot. I have not understood enough of your difficulties and suffering. It's not our intention to make you suffer more. It is the opposite. So please tell us about your suffering, your difficulties. I'm eager to learn to understand. It has to start like that, loving speech. And if you are honest, if you are true, they will open their heart and tell us. And then we practice compassionate, deep listening. And during the process of deep listening, we can learn so much about our own perception and their perceptions. Mm -hmm. And that is the best way, the only way to remove uh, terrorism. Terrorism or even difficulties between your, yourself and yes. family members or friends. Yes. And the principle is the same no matter the conflict. Yes. Terrorists, anti-terrorists, yes. father and son. Right. Yourself and your boss. Right. Yourself and your children, your best friend. Yes. Deep, compassionate listening and love and speech. This is, this is how we bridge the gap. This is how we deepen the relationships that we have. In the book, he talks about six mantras, six mantras for love and speech that I want to share with you. This is your homework. I'm giving you, giving you some leeway. And if you have nothing to write with or jot them down, that's okay. I'll post them on our church's Facebook page um, later today. So you'll have them, and you can go there and, and check them out. Um, how many of you are signed up for the uh, Conscious Connection email newsletter that we have? Okay. So I think there's a place on our website we can sign up for that because one of the practices I've started doing is recapping a little bit of the highlights from, from my talks in the Conscious Connections, and this will be in here too, okay? So you have some ways to, to find these things. So the six mantras of love and speech, and a mantra is, as we know, something we repeat, 
a, a, a saying, a, a lesson that we hold on to uh, in, a, in a short sentence. And, and because it is a mantra, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to say it out loud all the time. Um, because as I share these, you'll realize that when you're in a dialogue with someone, it could be a little awkward just to say it out. <laughs> you know, the other person may not be prepared for it, but it's more an internal mantra to help prepare you and help keep you grounded in that place of deep, compassionate listening. And the first one is simply, I am here for you. I am here for you. You can't be present to anyone unless you're there, first of all. Not just physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. I am here for you. And first, in order to be there for them, you have to be there for yourself. You gotta know yourself deeply and fully so you can show up for someone else. In a magazine, a Buddhist magazine, there was a personal ad section and one of the ads said, tall, dark, handsome Buddhist man seeking himself. <laughs> we, we, we have to be present for ourselves. We can practice the deep listening to ourselves. How often do we sit and listen to ourselves? You know, not just the good stuff, but everything. I am here for you. That's the first mantra. This is actually one that kind of works to say out loud to the other person as well. I am here for you and to mean it. The second mantra, I know you are there and I am very happy. I know you are there and I am very happy. This mantra lets them know that their presence is also important. So the first one is saying, my presence is here for you. The second one is saying, your presence is important in my life. I know you are there and I am very happy. This one might be awkward if it's a weird, you know, if it's a traumatic situation and they're telling you all this stuff and you're, I am very happy. So this may not be one you want to say out loud all the time. But, but, you say it to yourself. So that you don't sometimes go into a place where it might be, oh, here they go again. No. Your presence is important to me in my life. And there will be joy, and there is joy in our connection. I know you are there, and I am very happy. The third one, I know you suffer, and that is why I am here for you. Let's talk a little bit about suffering. So the Buddhist concept of suffering is kind of that idea of life, that there are going to be moments in life which don't always feel heavenly, joyful, it doesn't mean they're wrong, and it doesn't mean that we have to try to avoid them and eliminate them. These practices are not like an escape hatch, a way to avoid. No, these practices are such that we can use these moments of suffering to transform us, to deepen the relationship with another. You know, Mark Nepo, my favorite author, says, the thing in the way is the way. The thing in the way is the way. And it's the same with our suffering and the suffering of those who we love and are close to. We may see it's in the way for joy and happiness, but you know what? It is the way through to get there because it's an opportunity to deepen the love and relationship. And once we deepen that love and relationship, there will be joy. I know you suffer, and that is why I am here for you. The fourth one, I suffer, please help. I suffer, please help. This is a realization for ourselves that just as this person has connected with us in their suffering, we also have to connect with others in ours. Sometimes we have this, sometimes I have this awful habit of when I am suffering, I don't want nobody else to know. I want to crawl in my cave and I want to isolate myself. You know, and it's even worse as a visible personality. People don't want to see their minister suffering. They want to see their minister doing the stuff and making it work and being joyful. 
I want to see that too. <laughs> but the reality is, the reality is, that's not how life is every single moment. So I suffer, and I need to not isolate when I suffer. If anything, I need to do the opposite. I need to connect and reach out even more than when I am not suffering and not isolate. So that's a mantra that we, can, that we say to ourselves. I suffer, please help. And the help, the help is not fix it. The help is not fix it. The help is like that first one, just be there for me. Just be there. I don't know what I want, but I don't want to be alone in this. That's love and relationship. So just, just be there. I suffer, please help. The other, the other great thing about this one is that it stops, it stops me from sliding into a blame place of blaming the other person. You know, when we are in very close relationships with someone, something, you know, a little beyond casual, but even casual relationships, when something goes wrong or amiss or right, it's very easy to slide into that blame place. This is what they did. You know, and we're in unity, so we do it all correct. I see the Christ in them, but this is what they did. <laughs> you know, namaste, but this is what you did. Okay? The I suffer, please help. It helps keep me in that place of being grounded that, you know what? Yeah, I do stuff too. I say things too. And that in relationship, there's never one person to blame. There are two people to find resolution. I suffer. Please help. The fifth one. This is a happy moment. Okay? And this is not like a wishful, what I like to affectionately call, you know, bliss bunny moment of being in denial of what's in front of us. No. This is a declaration that... In this is joy. We may not see it yet. We may not have gotten to that place of being open to seeing it yet. But we remind ourselves, in this is joy. In this, too, is an opportunity for the presence of God to show up. And how is it showing up? In our love and relationship. In our love and communication and the healing and the harmonizing that will happen because we ground ourselves in that place of divine love. This, this is where the happy moment is. And the last one, perhaps my favorite, the last mantra, you are partly right. You are partly right. This is a great one to use not only when criticism comes your way, but when praise comes your way. You are partly right. When, when criticism comes your way and you say you are partly right, it, 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 it kind of helps you not um, get sucked into the other person's despair. You are partly right is, is a reminder that, you know what, regardless of if what they're saying about me is true or not, regardless of if I did do something to inflict harm in this relationship, there is still good in me. There is still good in me. At my core, I am divine, so there is good in me. So they're partly right. And when they heap the praise on us, you are partly right, kind of keeps us humble. You are partly right. When folks come through the receiving line and they say, you are so wonderful, so glad you're here. My response is, you are wonderful too. And I am glad you are here too. And I don't say it as a piecemeal whatever. I say it from a place of true humility that the only wonderful person in this room is all of us. All of us. And the day that I forget that is the day that I am lost. So you are wonderful, and I am glad that you are here. 
So that's our six mantras. I am here for you. I know you are there, and I am very happy. I know you suffer, and that is why I'm here for you. I suffer, please help. This is a happy moment, and you are partly right. So your homework assignment is to practice these mantras. Try to remember them as you go into dialogue, into conversation, into communication. Let them be the thing that stands under all your words. Love and communication, both this combination of, of deep listening and love and speech, this is, this is the rich soil in which our relationships thrive. And our relationships are important for us. You know, a while, not too long ago, um, scientists experimented with biospheres. You know what biospheres are? They, they, these huge self-contained, like domes, half domes, with their, old, with their own sustained environment. They were kind of working with them because, you know, when we go colonize Mars one day, because there's no oxygen there, we need these biospheres. But they found something interesting in the biospheres. Trees would not grow. And, it, and, you know, it perplexed them for a while. They had light. They had water. You know, there was oxygen. They had all these things, but they would not grow. And then, you know what they figured out was missing? The wind. The wind. Because what the wind did was force those trees into creating the bark as a way to, to protect themselves from the elements, if you will. And when that bark is formed, the tree can grow. If any you know anything about trees, if you want to, you know, other than outright cutting it down, if you want to kill a tree, you just rip that bark off. The bark allows the tree to grow. This is what relationships are for us. They allow us to grow in all ways. Emotionally, mentally, spiritually, in love. Relationships are the wind beneath our wings. It is the thing that allows us to rise to the highest and greatest version of ourselves. So be in deep listening this week. Be in love and speech this week. Allow yourself to let your relationships take you to the higher level that you are capable of. Let's take this in a meditation. So I invite you to plant both feet on the floor, and if you're comfortable, close your eyes. Allow yourself to feel that chair supporting you. Allow your hands to gently rest on your lap. And allow your focus, your attention, your awareness to shift to your breath. Let that breath be the anchor that grounds us in this present moment.
any thoughts or feelings of distraction in the mind or the body. Simply notice them without judgment and return to the breath. Allow ourselves to focus on that first mantra, I am here for you. <coughs> that you being the deepest part of ourselves. All love begins with self-love. All care begins with self-care. Being present for others begins with being present to ourselves. So in these few moments, we say to ourselves, all of ourselves, the strong, loving, evolved parts of ourselves, the tender, wounded, sheltered parts of ourselves, I am here for you. The divine fullness of who I am is present to all of me. I am here for you. I am here for you. Let us take this into the silence. I am here for you. I am here for you. Let this be the mantra that allows us a deeper place of love and compassion for ourselves. <coughs> to be the comfort for ourselves so that we may be the comfort for others. I am here for you. We hold this intention for others as we bring the prayer box up. And this prayer box contains the names of all those for whom we are holding an intention of the divine. So collectively, we hold for all the names and the situations in this prayer box. A knowledge that we are there for them, that someone is there for them, that the presence of God is there for them. And if there are others for which you would like to hold this intention, simply say their names out loud right now. It is through us, it is through us that the presence of God is there for us. 
more love. Let it be soon. Don't hesitate. Make love. Don't wait. Open your heart and let my love come in. I want this moment to start when I can feel. That's how we get more love, deep relationship. Deep relationship, more love. This is our opportunity for you to share more love with us as we prepare to um, joyfully and humbly accept your gifts through love offering. As you prepare your offering, um, let me bring your attention to the chaplains, the prayer chaplains who are here. I'm gonna invite them to stand uh, for a moment. These folks are here not just holding the consciousness of spirit during the entire service, but they're here to pray with you. Should you have a prayer need or a celebration as well, please see our prayer chaplains, and we thank you for your service. So as you continue to prepare your offerings, I remind you, that it is through your generosity and through your love demonstrated in this way that unity on the river is no longer in the basement of a bank, <laughs> but we are here on the river in this fabulous facility. And those of you who are watching uh, on live stream, you have the opportunity to take part in sharing that love as well. Just hit the donate button and share your love and gifts with us. Let us share our tithes and offering, blessing and affirmation. Together, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you in advance.
So for all these gifts, not just of the energy of money, but the energy of time, the energy of service, the energy of intention and consciousness that everyone in this room and beyond contribute to the spiritual community. I am truly, truly grateful. And so it is. Amen. Carol, I believe you have some things you want to share with us. It's up. Stand in the presence. Before I start with this, I just wanted to add a little bit of information. Um, yes, the annual meeting is after service, but we also have a potluck first. So please join us. There's also child care in the joy room if you'd like to stay. I want to talk a little bit about Saturday and all of the staff decisions on weather. And I apologize if people showed up for the snowball fight. That was a gala fundraiser uh, at 2. Um, just know that we are starting to put policies in place for cancellations. And you have to admit we've had a lot of snow. So this is what you're going to do. If you think, for example, that you have a class and you're not sure if you should go or not, check Facebook, Twitter, our website. Most likely you'll get a personal call it will be on Conscious Connections if it's a Friday. So that would be helpful. Um, also, I'm asked to tell you that if you're involved in this snowball fight with Ogan and the board, it's going, going to be next Saturday, and you will be contacted, okay? And in terms of the prosperity class, um, when we canceled that class, the weather forecast was awful. An hour later, it changed. So bear with us. Okay, family council meeting. This is for parents. That's Sunday, February 8th in the joy room. If you could join Christina Mariah. We do have uh, Reverend Denise D. Simone coming back as a guest speaker. And she'll be here Sunday, February 15th. She's talking about love, so there's more love to share. She's also doing a sound healing workshop in the afternoon. There is a sign up in hospitality. Opening the heart with sound, opening your chakras. And I just wanted to say that uh, Prosperity Plus 2 was canceled last Monday night. It has been extended a Monday. And you've heard the news that we may get another storm <laughs> on Monday. So most likely, not saying, but, you know, pay attention to the weather for this Monday night. Yes, and we do put a phone message on the office phone. Just another heads up on April chaplain training. I was so excited. I brought this up last Sunday, and I already have five applicants. So if you have any questions, you can see me after service. There's information and forms out on the bulletin board. And I believe we're good. Thank you, Carol. It's a great job. So, um, uh, so we want to thank people for all of the service that it requires to be in these services on Sundays. Um, and today, you know, I, I just want to take a moment because it is our annual meeting. And for those of you who may be new to the church and don't know what the annual meeting is, it's a time for us to reflect on the past year. There'll be a report by our treasurer, a report by the president of the board, which is me. Um, we will complete this year's board and bring on new board members. Those of you who are members can vote on the and the new board members coming on. We will have a, um, a forward look and thoughts from Reverend Ogan. And uh, I think that's all. Uh, yeah, so a review of our finances and our planning, look at the strategic plan. So please join us for that celebration. I also just, as part of our thank yous, want to thank the staff. You know, Maura, our music director, Jane Cowan, director of operations, uh, Carol Walrzak, who handles our chaplains program, and of course, Diane and Christina, uh, Diane Puyelli, our office manager. We just have a wonderful staff, and I and want to Seth. acknowledge them. Don't get and Seth. Seth Waller's that. Thank get you. Seth. And then lastly, by way of thanks, I just also want to acknowledge, you know, Reverend Ogan, it's been one month that you have been with us. Uh, Woo! You are, yeah, congratulations. 
you are very much still in transition, uh, you know, with your family in uh, the D.C. area, in Maryland, your new job here, getting used to the weather, getting used to all of us crazy birds that are around you all the time. And, um, you know, I just want to acknowledge that perhaps there are times that that hasn't been easiest. So if there's any time that you suffer, know that we are here with you. Thank you. Brian Dozier. Today's nice one of those days. <clears throat> and I showed up and I said, I suffer. Please help. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have some backup here. Will's, Will's going to be shadowing my voice for me. <clears throat> wow. Bring it and I do have to say, I wasn't here at the bank, but I was at the uh, Masonic Temple. Yeah. We were at the Masonic <laughs> Temple for a few years. So I go pretty far back, too. I want to see you. 
I want to see us take it out. Oh, open the eyes to my heart, Lord. Oh, open the eyes to my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Thanks for your help. Wow. That was awesome. Beautiful, Brian. Thank you. Let's welcome in our youth and family ministry. talked about Martin Luther King and all the acts of kindness and service that he did. This week we started our lessons on Jesus and we learned about acts of kindness that Jesus did in the beginning of his ministry. And we have a challenge for the children and the parents may be able to help with this and the grandparents. And that is now until Easter for them to come in each week and tell us what acts of kindness they have done. And we're going to fill a jar full of all the things that the children have done as an act of kindness. I love that. I'm going to bring that home to my son. So it is 1110. It is our intention to start the annual meeting at quarter of 12. So have your potluck, have some fellowship, and let's be back in here in 35 minutes. Let's rise and sing our peace song. forward from this day knowing that we are love in love in communication the light of God surrounds us the love in God enfolds us we are the love of God the power of God protects 